Hey, in this episode, we're going to talk about adding this electric booster tank after the solar tank, and we're going to insulate this guy so that it uses as little electricity as possible. Hey, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Man, that big solar tank did fantastic. It lasted a full three weeks. Uh, supplying 100% of our needs until it eventually dropped down and got to about 110 degrees and, and then we broke down and we added the 20 gallon tank in line. So now this guy is bringing it back up that last 20 degrees in temperature. Uh, actually not today, the tank is 130, the solar tank is 130 today, so this guy should be off except it has a standby loss. It's not a very well insulated tank. So all these components coming off of here, they get hot, they're losing the heat to the surrounding environment, and that means that the electric element has to keep kicking on. So we're gonna insulate this guy today to cut down on the standby loss. Now, when I do that, I'm gonna build a, a box around this thing, and I'm not gonna be able to look in very easily. And I wanna make sure that uh, the pressure relief valve's not dripping, that this thing's not filling with water, or any signs of leakage in advance. So I picked up this siren that is supposed to go off if it senses water, and I'm gonna have the siren outside the insulation run the wire in with this little sensor. Uh, and then I went ahead and I picked up these lithium batteries, uh, so hopefully I don't have to change this as often. And I'll leave links to all these items in the description below. So let's test it and make sure it works. And here we go. And it has an on off switch on the side, so we're gonna turn it on. <laughs> yep, it works. <laughs> so we'll dry that off. <laughs> uh, I put in this rubber before I put in the tank. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this up to make a little pan around here uh, before I add the insulation. I jammed a piece of insulation up here uh, between the joist and the top of these fittings. And then I uh, dropped a plumb bob from the corners and made sure that it clears this lever on the valve and it clears the spigot uh, all the way around. Uh, and I marked it out down here on the floor. Alright, we're down to our last panel. Here's the sensor for the alarm, and I'm going to tape this down here. So now it's flat on the bottom of the rubber, and then the alarm can come up and sit right there, or wherever you want. I'm going to make sure it's on now so I don't forget that later. like that. So I'm stitching the corners together right now just with these tape and I'm pulling them close and then after they're all stitched up all the way around then I'll tape the long seam. All right this is our last piece of tape to seal the box off. If in case anybody's wondering why I used one inch foam instead of I don't know uh, two inch or something else well, the reason was that I only had one inch between the underside of this joist and the top of those brass elbows. And it was a tight fit uh, to bang it in there. Uh, but now it's, uh, it's in place, it's sealed, it has that liner, it has the, the alarm uh, up here, and it uh, should be pretty good. Our water tank's fully insulated, so I'm going to put the electric meter on the circuit breaker for this guy and measure it now over the course of the next couple of weeks and see what kind of uh, electricity we use. Hopefully we knock that down, um, again, because it shouldn't need to increase the water much, only a few degrees from the big solar tank, uh, and now we've cut down on the standby losses. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted, and thanks so much for watching. If you like these videos, please click the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you have any questions about the project, 
uh, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot.